do is I'm going to show you three pictures that I've harvested off your Instagram. I want you to tell me what you're wearing in each of them, maybe where you are and a little bit about the kind of backstory of that photo. So this is your first one. What are we on? This is, um, I think I might have taken this photo either like the day before or on New Year's Day. Maybe last, maybe last, if not last year, the year before, I can't remember. Um, with uh, Ben Holston, okay. so big, big Ben, he's um, Tarnished Vision. Right. So he shoots, for a long time, he shot exclusively like the Children of Zeus, DRS, lots of kind of Manchester bass music and hip hop music. Yeah. He's a really talented videographer. I managed to, to get this CP company, uh, Metropolis, zip top. And uh, we went out and did some test shots and do you know what I mean? I really, he just caught me in the moment. The head in hands. Yeah, he caught me, caught me in the moment, just wiping my eyes or doing whatever I was doing. And it just looked, I don't know, there was something about it that was a bit, um, it has a reverence to it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it's something almost a little bit um, religious. Religious, okay. Yeah. Iconography. Yeah, yeah. So, so I decided that I would keep it and use it. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about CP then, because that's um, someone that you've like, I've seen you wearing a little bit of, you had a Stone Island jacket on when you roll up here. Is CP some, a company that you've got quite a close relationship with? CP company is like, it's the brand for me. And that's like since kind of childhood mm. and kind of looking up to people that I would see wearing it that I might look up to um, and then understanding more about the brand, obsessing about the brand, finding out about the history, then, you know, of course, you have all of the other discussion about Massimo Osti and all of those mm. kind of things. And over the years, especially since I kind of ghost walked into working in fashion, I've made an effort to get close, closer and closer and closer to the brand. And, you know, I think it, it took maybe like three or four years before my business was close enough to say, yeah, we've done some work with CP company. And that's still a work in progress. We've done little bits of work. We've done retail campaigns. We've done partnership stuff. Um, but, you know, I'm like, have a relationship with the brand now. That's a real one. Um, and yeah, we're working towards hopefully doing some bigger and Sick, man. Yeah, some must better, be a real stuff with them. Childhood dream come true from a brand that you've admired from afar as a consumer and, you know, the kudos that it's got. And it just looks so exotic, man. Like, you're in a goggle glasses, a uh, goggle top there, is it? Yeah, lens, a lens top, lens, lens on the top. left sleeve. Yeah. So, like, I remember finding them on eBay when I first started going on eBay, and it just looked like no piece of clothing that I'd ever seen before, just beamed in from another planet. Yeah, it's from the future. Yeah, it is, man. It's, it's from the future. And, you know, by the time you kind of get into understanding the science and technology that's involved in creating a CP company garment, if you're a little bit techy or a little bit into science you'll just be absorbed by it you'll be absorbed by it you'll be reading about it for days and days and days i mean i've got a book a, a small book at home that i got with a garment actually uh, i bought a garment and i received some 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 uh, information about the garment there's like over 230 proprietary technologies that they've invented that's nuts man do you know and what i'm most saying companies do one if they're lucky you know right so it's um yeah it's an amazing amazing brand and but I think it's the competitiveness of CP wanting to be better be first do more and you know even if you kind of look at the 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 kind of history the millimilia the millimilia was a it was a race it was a Grand Prix it was a thousand mile race and you take that competitive level of thinking and you apply it to the sorts of people that you might see in the media or on the street we're in CP company, you understand that there's this competitive affinity that is just there. People get it. The people who get it, get it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's man. why you'll see Skepta wearing it. It's why you'll see Stormzy wearing it. It's There's that competitiveness. The one-upmanship, yeah. The one-upmanship of it all, whether that's through what you wear and you're, you're one-upping what you wear, or if it's about your practice, maybe you're an MC or another musician and you're focused on being the best in your own thing. I feel like that affinity is there. Expert storytellers as well. Like, you know, yeah. it's got those bits of history baked into the clothes with the technologies, man. And 
just good to chat about, nerd out about, innit? And and also the archive, like their archive is just insane. And I had the opportunity to go to the archive in March this year. Where's this? In Milan? Uh, Bologna. Okay. Um, but I was actually, I was in Dubai and I missed the opportunity to okay. go, which I'm like, oh, I'm dying about, bro. CP I'm, reach out next year. Yeah, I'm dying about. Well, the, the, the thing is, you know, I'm very much in touch with them and I, I'm a part of uh, a network called Locating Menswear. Okay. So the Locating Menswear network, um, it's uh, overseen by Andrew Grove. Yeah, Professor. Uh, Professor Andrew Grove. Um, and it's a, a, a network of fashion and menswear professionals um, who come together. There should be an exhibition upcoming next year, um, but CP Company and Seven Store are very much involved in it. So like Lorenzo Osti and Enrico, who runs marketing there on this project as well. So it means that every sort of quarter or now and again, when we all meet up, we all kind of get to sit and talk to each other. So. I'll be talking to them live and direct. Yeah. Yeah. The wine's good on that table. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all tea and biscuits, man. Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's all tea and biscuits, bro. Have a look at this one. This is your next fit pick breakdown. Where are we at here? So that is at um, the studio in Ancoats, Ancoats Studio. Um, and it's, this was shot for Moss. Um, of suit fame. Yeah, yeah, Moss, um, you know, and, and they're known for fine tailoring, they're known for high tailoring, but we're kind of working with them to help to shift that perspective a little bit okay. so that people understand that as a brand, it's amazing high quality tailoring. You know, I think that they had a royal warrant like for a long time, I think since maybe like the late 1800s or early 1900s. Royal warrant. Maybe. I've heard that before. Is that where you, you reach a certain level of tailoring and get... It's rubber stamped kind of thing. Yeah, you know, like when you when you look at um, I don't know, I can't remember what what has it like baked beans. You know, like your, your, <laughs> you know your tin of baked beans that has like that royal yeah, stamp on it, yeah. or it, or do you know um, what I mean? Yeah, that's I that's like a, a royal warrant, right? Okay, yeah. Um, so I think that they've had one for for a long time. You know, like Burberry and some of those brands have as well. It's legit, basically. Yeah, yeah it's, it's legit. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's a proper seal. It's a seal of approval. Yeah. Um, whether you're a monarchist or not. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, like, yeah, we won't get into that. Okay, that's all, that's all that mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's for <laughs> another time. Um, but no, this was a was a shot from um, from the studio location. I um, mean, the car that's in the shot uh, belongs to the person that owns the studio. What's the whip? Is it white Merc? Yeah, it's a it's a Mercedes SL 500, I think it is. It's vintage, like a, like a yeah, vintage '90s classic car. Um, and, and there's a filter on this picture that I couldn't get rid of for some reason. So the suit is actually like a kind of, like a deep red burgundy, but mm. this this filter just made it pop purple somehow. Um, and the shoes are obviously Clint's, White Doves, the Clint's t-shirt. Yeah, I mean, like... So it's combining that, I mean, Clint's is like the most bleeding edge kind of contemporary streetway. Look at the coolest kids in Manchester and Clint's is what's on foot. Mm -hmm. So mixing that with the more classic tailoring of Moss, like, um, is that, that that's the look in it, that Absolutely. juxtaposition, like. Absolutely, and kind of not being afraid to, not being afraid to mix it up, which is, I think, as like we get on with this interview, we'll probably talk about that quite a bit, but mm. I think like mixing it up and dressing up as well. You know, I think dressing up is something that people have stopped doing so much. Um, or maybe people of a particular kind of clubbing demographic have stopped yeah. doing, but dressing up is a is a thing. And yeah, with this one, we we wanted to go. Yeah, let's let's dress up. You know, so I've kind of always been comfy mixing up tailoring and streetwear. And since we're on a podcast now, I think this shoot is from something that you did that led to an interview format. Um, that's right video yeah. so what you tell us a little bit about that yeah so so in partnership with Manchester's finest which is you know got them guys yeah it's, it's, it's Manchester's news and culture arts culture outlet really um, you know and I, I work closely so TPG and finest work closely together it's a bit of a strategic partnership mm. do you know what I mean like we, we get on really well so Moss have just opened a new flagship store in Manchester um, and 
Finest and myself have created a series of conversations about tailoring, about art, culture, music, food, all of the things that, you know, people do while they wear clothes, right? Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and yeah, so this was shot on location of one of the the conversation shoots where we had a chef, a quasi mensa, um, a quasi brenya mensa, sorry to give him his full name, um, but he's got a, a restaurant experience called Tatale and Co. Okay. Um, and we had him for an interview um, talking about his practice, what he does and his sense of style and, you know, how his sense of style might be, you know, impacted by his chef work or not. Yeah, it was sick, man. He rustled you up something delicious looking live on air, didn't he? It's the most, it was the most simple food, but also the best cheesecake I've ever had. <laughs> like, he just whipped up some cheesecake mix. But actually, he put in like a chin chin crumb, which is like a traditional Ghanaian street okay. food, kind of like a biscuit, um, uh, and some, some dill and apple, which sounds like it's not supposed mm. to go together, but it was... Bang you, man. Let's go and check out the uh, the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To to Tali and Cole, it, it's it's such an elevated black dining experience. Like, and it's it's a one of one. Like, you know, and I think because Mensa himself comes from the music business, he's just got a way of seeing food, dining, music, the whole experience together. Like, you would never have another experience like nice, it. Nice man. Sounds yeah. right up my street. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, this last okay. one, what we on? So this last picture, do you know, it's so long ago. So this is this this is interesting because this picture, I was maybe 20 years old in this picture. I'm wearing a Versace versus hoodie and I think Armani jeans. Um and it was in a studio, a recording studio in London called Soho Studios. Don't know if it's there anymore. Um, but yeah, I suppose as we get into this, like you'll find out like I had a career as a performer for like a long time, most of my young life as a musician, as a rapper. Um, so this was taken as a test shot for something. I can't remember what it was taken for. Um, and it ended up being like a press shot, but it was... No, I remember what it was. I met the stylist. I was going to say, I was going to ask if you were styled by it or whether it was Garm's uh, um, artist's own kind of thing. Yeah, it was, it, it was, I met a stylist and we, we went shopping um, and we went everywhere. We went like Selfridges, Harrods. Mm. We, we went everywhere trying to find clothing that I liked. Okay. Because I had a very, my own sense of style. And in those days, if you were signed to a major record label, they were really wanted to control your image. So the record label really wanted to control what I wore, how I looked. And it was always a bit of a, a, a fight between us because I knew what I wanted to wear. I knew what I felt like I looked good in. Yeah. Um, and they got me a stylist and she, she's amazing. I didn't realize until afterwards, like, exactly who she was big deal yeah really big deal like her name's karen bins yeah she's one of like the most up there stylists in the game like even till now yeah you know what i mean and um and yeah and she she styled me for a few things she styled me for my album cover which was shot in uh uh spillfields market okay she styled me for some other stuff in some isse miyaki well you look great man i mean it w was this a compromise for you then is this a mixture between what she wanted what the label wanted and what you thought you could get away with. Do you know what? I, I, I think it, it felt like it was right because Karen Bins, as much as she's higher fashion, she's hip hop okay. to the core. Right. Do you know what I mean? And I think she knew who I was straight away. I think she understood what I would feel comfortable in and what I would look good in, you know, and just picked up some stuff and she was like, just try these. You know, and but no, this was was one of the more like well known images of me in any like what might be considered to be high fashion. Mm. Yeah, big brands, man, must have felt good as a twenty year old because I couldn't have afforded Armani jeans and you know what? It, tops. <laughs> it, it felt it definitely felt good um, to get hands on with it. And you know what? In those days, like I knew what I liked, but there was a lot that I didn't know about okay. fashion, and there was a lot of brands that I didn't know and hadn't been hands on with. So. Meeting stylists, like Karen, Karen wasn't the first, the, wasn't the only stylist that I worked with, but meeting stylists who could inform you and 
share what was on their reel with you and tell you about it, mm. you know? Like up until then, like I, I didn't even know that Issei Miyake made garments. I thought it was just aftershave yeah. <laughs> when I was 20 years old. Do you know what I'm saying? Time was sent that one. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I thought it was just aftershave. Yeah. So, you know, for her to like put me in a Issei Miyake jacket and for me to understand that it meant that, okay, if I was going out shopping and all of a sudden I'm this young person, I've got all this money, now I know where I can spend it in a more discerning way, yeah, right? Man. Yeah. Sick. Oh, lovely yeah. stories, mate. Thanks for sharing them with us. Appreciate it. Cool. My mind is big. Strangers. Oh, I get so much by strangers.